Hi, my name is Walter Everton, and I am a freelance audio engineer and musician in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been asked to talk you through how to best record the French horn. Some of the concepts will apply more broadly, and a few will be specific to the recorder. First, let's talk about how the French horn sounds. If you take a second to think about this, no one ever listens to the French horn by placing their heads close to the bell. Instead, a listener will hear the French horn from afar in a concert hall, or at the very least, from some sort of distance, with the projection of the instrument opposite that of where the audience is. This means that if you place a microphone close to the bell of the horn in an attempt to close mic the instrument, you will end up with a recording that really doesn't represent the sound of a horn terribly well. Instead, the ideal placement for a mic is, like where an audience would be sitting, in front of the horn, some distance away. Now, since you are likely recording this at home, or in a practice room, or in some other non-ideal space, moving the microphone further away from the instrument may not be practical, or even possible. And to add to this, in spaces that don't sound great, think an empty room with flat walls on all sides as a worst case scenario, you really don't want to capture the sound of the room anyway. So the best thing to do in this case is to close mic the French horn. Now we aren't going to put the recorder where the bell is, as that isn't a good idea. Instead, close micing a horn, in my experience, is best done by placing the microphone in front of the player one to four feet and a few feet above the player's head, with the mic pointed down towards the head of the player. When doing this yourself, it's a good rule of thumb to put the mic about an arm and a half length away, 20 degrees or so above and in front of you. This suggestion is an ideal placement, and I realize that many of you may not be able to achieve this placement. And that's okay. You can get very decent results by more simply placing the recorder in front of you. The key takeaway here is that the microphone or recorder be in front of you and not pointed into the bell of your instrument. So a more attainable location to place a recorder might be on a table in front of you, and you positioning yourself to be about three to four feet away from the table to mimic that close mic sound. Other solutions would be, of course, any surface above the ground in front of you. For example, a stool, another music stand that you aren't using for music, of course, or a chair. And the least ideal place for the recorder would be on the floor or ground where you are. There are a number of reasons to avoid the ground, but tapping feet or any other people walking anywhere near you will cause those sounds to be very easily transmitted to the recorder due to the physics of sound. Now, some specifics on the recorder you are using. The Zoom H1N has two microphones, so anything you record with this recorder will have a left and a right channel. When recording a mono source like a horn, you will want to make sure you position yourself centered along the long axis of the recorder, so it will record a fairly similar signal into each microphone, creating a quasi-mono recording. This recorder is designed to be pointed at a sound source, like your horn, so that the recorder is pointing at the sound source. That is to say, it isn't upright, as that would be pointed at the ceiling. Once powered on and you have confirmed that you have an SD card with enough free space to make your recording, make sure the recorder is set to either 24-bit 48kHz or 24-bit 96kHz. These will be the safest formats to record to because in the case you need to send these files to someone else to process or you want to process them yourselves, these formats will let you do so with the fewest problems. For reference, 2448 is what film and television operate in, and 2496 is what is used to make professional classical and jazz albums. Pop, rock, and other genres tend to use 24441, as this is CD quality, and they don't really see a need to record in a higher quality format. Now, for the rest of the four quick adjust settings. The second button labeled Low Cut is a filter for removing low frequencies, hence the name Low Cut. I would suggest to set this to either off or 80 hertz, as any higher you can risk making your recording sound weak, especially since the horn is capable of playing very low notes with fundamentals going below 100 hertz. If in doubt, leave this off. You can create the same effect as an 80 hertz low cut filter after the fact in something like Adobe Audition easily if needed. If you record it into the file, you can't undo it. The button labeled LIM LIM is the built-in limiter. I would leave this on as it will prevent you from clipping your recording. On a high level, the limiter prevents the input signal from distorting the electronic circuit, causing bad sounds to be recorded. Leaving this on will reduce the severity of any clipping that may occur. Finally is the auto level button. Leave this off. It will sound much more natural to set the level manually. Which takes me nicely into the last step, which is to set a level for your recorder. 
This will be a bit more difficult when recording yourself, but it is important to do this as to avoid the recording being too soft or clipping because it's too loud all the time. The goal here is when you play at the loudest volume you're going to play for the recording, your recorder is set to a level that doesn't clip it. The best way to do this is to place the recorder's input volume dial at 7, and then work your way down until you see that the clipping indicators aren't colored black anymore. Then, once you have that level, turn down the input volume dial a half or one unit as a safety. Once everything is set, you are ready to press record and make a recording. Don't forget to press record.